Hey everyone, welcome to another amazing episode of the Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined podcast. Y'all, I am buzzing about this next guest. Uh, her name's Whitney Gardner, and I am so excited because she is an up and coming business owner. She's where I was three years ago where she's trying to sort out all the things. So I am very excited for her to share her story with you. And she's also a mom. So for those of you who are caregivers and moms like I am, this is going to be a good episode that can help you because we both are so passionate about helping you come along, come alongside you and helping you decrease the overwhelm and stress so you can do all the things, right? So I'm very excited for this episode. Whitney, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and be in front of your audience. It's always such an honor. And I just love helping people and being able to get the word out. So I'm super excited. Absolutely. So it was so interesting how I still can't get over how interesting it was that it just kind of everything just fell into place when we when Whitney and I had our planning call um, about a week ago. It was so funny. It's like, oh my gosh, you're into this and you're into the, the lines, the stars just align. So it was just mm-hmm. meant to be. So yes. um, Whitney, I want you to let's start off with or start off with excuse me, guys, um, you sharing a little bit about your story. So yeah. what brought you into the space of building an online business? Yeah, so this is such a great question. So I've always had a little bit of like an entrepreneurial spirit. And I actually went to school to be an elementary school teacher. And once I realized that that was not for me, I started experience, like experimenting a lot with different career fields and um, different opportunities and interests and stuff. And back in 2020, I actually had my own podcast in my own platform for women's health and wellness. It's something I've always been super passionate about, but I wasn't quite ready. And I didn't have like the knowledge and the skills at the time to like dive all in. And then I was going to plan like an engagement in my wedding and have a baby. And I knew like a lot was going to be coming and it just wasn't the perfect time. But that was like the little bit of a beginning of like, Ooh, I like having a podcast. I like having a blog. I like having like social media and doing all the things. So that was a little bit of that. And then fast forward when uh, my baby was about six months to a year old, I started being like, okay, I think I want to start getting back into something again. I'm going to build another little mini baby. Right. And so I started thinking about, okay, what should I do? And I started Googling all these things and they were like, okay, well, blogs are actually still really big. And I was like, okay, cool. So then I started researching into like having a blog, but then I was like, Ooh, I still really want to get into podcasting again. And then really realizing that everything could be like tied together. And so eventually I want to like create a course and I want to do public speaking and I want to write a book. And so now I'm building like a real brand for myself and having like a real niche that I didn't have before because I just didn't know like how everything worked. So yeah, now I'm kind of into that and just trying to figure everything out. But I'm always open to like new opportunities. And I am super excited because I'm going to be releasing my first coaching program next month. So I just have a lot in the works and um, I just do a little bit of everything and I have so many different passions and interests with it, but setting boundaries and being able to help my mamas out there. Like that's my, my number one reason that I'm really doing this because as moms, we don't always have a lot of help and support. And once I became a mom, I was like, okay, now I need to help this whole new demographic of people now that I am one. So we can all be the best versions of ourselves, especially as like ambitious working moms. That's like my main um, group of people that I like to work with and educate. So, yeah. I love that. Well, and I love that, you know, niching down is huge because, you know, if we, if we, you don't want just anybody in your program or anybody in your um, spot on the internet. And mm-hmm. I love how you also touched on networking. I, it's so funny. I actually just recorded a daily tip reel about networking and networking again, doesn't have to be really hard guys. Um, Whitney and I having this conversation and her interest in being on my podcast, mm-hmm. that's, this is a form of networking. Mm-hmm. Whitney coming on to this podcast is putting her voice, her brand, her message in front of my audience and then vice versa. Mm-hmm. I will be sharing my work with her. So podcasting is a great way because it gives you a chance to talk out and clean up your message and share Mm -hmm. and network because you never know who's listening on someone's um, someone else's audience for one 
and it opened the and it can open up the door. Um, I actually just had an email from somebody else um, saying, "Hey, uh, I found your podcast on Apple. Uh, could we have a conversation?" I'm like, "Sure." So you never know. You never know. Um, it's for some marketing software or something. So it's probably not something I'm going to probably necessarily um, invest in. But still having the chance to have a conversation and get to meet some people and find out mm -hmm. what other stuff is out there benefits mm -hmm. me because it gives me my job as your caregiver and business coach, guys, is to give you guys value and resources. So by me being the gauntlet, the guinea pig and finding out what's out there and researching like, hey, this there's this resource or have you used this resource? It's what allows you to then go, OK, I'm going to try this or I'm going to try this and you cohesively figure out what create a system. Remember, we talk about systems a lot, figure mm -hmm. out systems and tools, whether it's digital or paper, that works for you. And especially in community too, you need that as well. So uh, Whitney coming on the podcast was just a godsend to me because I love I'm going after people that are exactly where she is at where they're just starting. And mm -hmm. they're going, what in the name of Mike do I do? <laughs> How do I do this? Because um, this is my favorite thing, because I started out with a blog too back in May of 2020, thinking I would do the blogging mat as well. But I'm not a strong writer, okay? Mm. <laughs> that that was really my drive of why I shifted from blogging into doing more coaching, because I love having these intentional conversations with people, with guests, mm -hmm. and it just fires me up, whether it is on a coaching call with a potential client or doing a collaborative a uh, project like this, um, speaking on other platforms and podcasts, I love having conversations and hearing other people's stories and being able to engage that way because it's my comfort zone. Now, does it mean I don't need to still work on my skills with my writing? Because I do write, uh, you know, we, we still write in other ways. We write landing pages, we write sales pages, we write mm -hmm. emails, we write proposals. Um, if we're going to write a book, I'm doing a book project potentially next year too. So, you know, there's, all, there's so many skills that one has to learn as um, an entrepreneur and the same as skill as a caregiver. And the mm -hmm. same is true as a parent. No two journeys are totally 100% the same. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to understand, guys, that it's possible. It's possible to go after your dreams in your business, manage your loved one, whether that's just personally as a mom, like what Whitney's doing, or if it's caregiving um, for both being a mom like I am with a with a small daughter and caring for my uh, husband's uh, chronic illness. So it's a lot, but it's not impossible. So I want you guys who are if you're listening and thinking, Melissa, Whitney, I can't do it. I don't have enough time or I, I'm not well, I'm not qualified. Guys, Whitney and I started from zero. We started from zero and we had to try some things to figure out that didn't work. We both started with blogs and we were like, well, maybe yes or no. And, you know, Whitney's picking it back up. But for me, I'm, I pulled back. So that's okay. That's mm -hmm. okay. There's no right or wrong way. So Whitney, um, when you were um, going through this process of getting back into it, um, what specifically about supporting ambitious moms mm -hmm. fires you up? You mentioned that, that that's your past. And so if mm -hmm. I'm a potential, if I wasn't the, if I wasn't a caregiver or, and I was just a mom, but I was having that entrepreneurial bug, like what you talked about a moment ago, what mm -hmm. would be something you would be talking to me? Like, how could you help me get my foot in the door when I'm trying to figure this all out? Yeah. So do you mean within like the entrepreneurial realm or do you mean within the realm of like um, learning how to like set boundaries and stuff? Let's do both. Let's because I because because they're intertwined. You know, you got to have boundaries okay. as a mom because yeah, they self care. Yeah, don't burn out, and so you still need to feel. You still need to do passionate things that light you up, whether it's mm -hmm. hobbies or anything else. That's something I fir firmly believe, and as an entrepreneur, right? But yeah. then too, like if you are an ambitious mom with an ambitious goal for being an entrepreneur, that's mm -hmm. important too. So yeah. let's kind of break it down and go both ways with it because I'm sure that will help people. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the common themes between both of these things is really just taking like one step at a time and wanting to experiment and try new things and really trying to be honest with yourself about like, what do I really want to change? What are my goals? What are my interests? What really does light me up? And sometimes these are common themes that could be going on throughout your whole life. Like for me, I've always loved like public speaking and I've always loved, um, like talking to people like my kindergarten teacher was even like your your daughter talks too much and I'm like well you know what now I have a podcast and I'm fulfilling my ever need to talk to people so um <laughs> so um anyways it's just funny because there's always like 
everything is a journey. Everything is a road and you could make so many different choices and go on to so many different paths, but it's really just like being open and willing to experiment and realizing like if you have one job, like as a mom or as a caregiver or as a parent, like that doesn't have to be your only role and you can do it all if you have like systems and boundaries and have different like things that you want for yourself and you know what's important for the day and like for even your week. And that's like one of my top tips I give my moms is like make five priorities for the day. And if one of those isn't something that you end up like getting done, it's not that big of a deal, but at least you had like a semi structure for your day instead of being like, okay, well, I want to do the laundry and cook and I'm going to walk and do my mindfulness and uh, need to record a podcast episode and need to do this. Like if you overwhelm yourself by thinking that you have to be a super mom all in one day, like that is really what can make you go crazy instead, yes. like just focus on your top priorities for the day and like what you really want to do. And then you can become a super mom over time. And just taking things like day by day, hour by hour, or just like, even if you are switching realm into the entrepreneurship thing, like for me, I'm like, if I could just do one thing today that moved my business forward, like I'm doing a great job and having that positive mindset of like, I am doing the best that I can. I only have so much time because I still am working my other job. Plus I have my baby, plus I have my family and myself. So it's just being realistic with your expectations, like knowing us as entrepreneurs, as moms or people with caregiving responsibilities or other responsibilities, like we not may not be able to push it like 95%, like if we could, when we were single. So really adjusting those expectations for yourself too, to be like, that's not what my life looks like now. And that's okay. And for me, I think it's better because now I don't have to worry about a lot of the things that I used to be like so consumed with when I was like single or just starting out with a lot of these things. And now that I've had so many great like life accomplishments, like for me, being a mom was the number one thing I always wanted to do in my whole life. Like that was my life purpose. That was my life mission. And now I think that I'm realizing it's a lot bigger than that. And it's changing because now that I am a mom, I still want to push and I still want to do more. And that's like why I'm in the entrepreneurial space because right. I think that my lifelong purpose is to be like a teacher and an educator and a motivator and like be a source of inspiration and motivation for people because I want to do that with my daughter, but I also want to do that with other moms and people that are working and just like realizing that you really can do it all. If you just do like some of these little like shifts and changes throughout your day. Amen, girl, girl, you just blew it out of the park. Um, oh. <laughs> I really, yeah. And I love, you know, like I actually have a book on my desk here. I got this from my productivity coach, but um, eat that frog by uh, Brian Tracy. And, you know, really guys, whether you're an entrepreneur, or whether you're a mom, whether you're a caregiver, you know, it's not about doing like the whole 80%. Like, you know, you want mm -hmm. the highest, top, you want to be doing the top 20% of your 100% of tasks is really what it's about. So like um, Brit Whitney gave the idea of doing your top five. I love mm -hmm. that. Um, mm -hmm. for, for me, one thing that has helped is what is the one, what, what you know, it's called frogs. I have my big frog where I have one bigger task I want to get done for the week. Mm -hmm. And then the littler tasks, uh, maybe two to three littler tasks I want to get done for the week and I don't put anything else on my calendar except those tasks if I get done early I will add something if I don't it has to be done by Friday so mm -hmm. and that could look like a lot of different things like in especially even in your home life um we all need to clean our homes we all need to cook but maybe but that's where breaking it down with systems in a way that works for you for getting those tasks done mm -hmm. works pre kids pre my husband getting sick I would, I worked as a certified nursing assistant. I would work four shifts and get two days off. That first day was always a work day. So if bills were due, I paid bills. I would clean the house. I would do two or three loads of laundry. But now being a mom and a caregiver and running my business, and especially a few, a few years ago when my husband was more critically ill than what he is now, he wasn't as stabilized as it were. Um, I couldn't bet on that. I could plan, but you know, that could be the day he had four seizures in a day and would be out and would be really sick. So 
one thing that hell has helped me is just taking those tasks and just get down into a way to where it's manageable. Mm-hmm. So for lot, for example, for us with laundry, I look at the hamper when it gets to be three quarters to all the way full, I run a load first thing in the morning. And I give myself grace. If all I do is get it in the dryer at the end of the day, even if I don't get them folded, at least we have clean clothes and I'm not, it's not, I'm keeping it manageable. It's not getting to the point where it's overflowing and I'm completely overwhelmed. Like, oh gosh, I got like five loads of laundry I need to catch up on. So mm-hmm. it might be, and it might mean I might be doing smaller to medium sized loads three or four times a week, but still it keeps it manageable to where it gets it done. Yeah. And you can do that. Oh. And you can do that even with your cleaning. Maybe instead of trying to clean every room every week maybe on Mondays you deep clean the kitchen you eyeball the kitchen and your appliance maybe on Tuesday it's okay vacuum all the pathways maybe on Wednesday it's like okay I hit the bathrooms and I deep clean those maybe on Thursday it's going through and decluttering some drawers or the closets because you know they're neat or maybe that's the day that you make to like I know with me I need to um following my father's death I need to get some stuff out of here so I've been mm-hmm. maybe it's time to do a haul to goodwill or whatever donation centers that you have in your area to get rid of some stuff so it's out of there so you have less crap in your house to be frank Mm -hmm. so there's more than one way to do it and there's tools to do it so Whitney I'm going to share two of my favorite digital tools that have helped me both as a mom caregiver and Mm -hmm. business owner and then I'd love you to share your perspective of what yours are because sometimes because I know for me having digital tools to help me keep track of all this has helped me so much more than just trying to do it on paper because you know who here you know raise a hand who here used to do the old sticky note thing where you'd have like 5,000 oh sticky notes and nothing would get done and it would yeah. just be a clutter it would not be streamlined it's a disaster right so let's yeah. help our moms caregivers and entrepreneurs so okay so yeah. for organization um, is key for, <laughs> exactly so and it's a system organization yeah. is a system okay mm-hmm. so in terms of appointments meetings for my business, medical appointments, my daughter's school schedule, church mm-hmm. activities. My favorite digital tool by far is Google Calendar. Mm-hmm. It's free. It's accessible on your desktop or laptop or your phone. Mm-hmm. It's customizable. You can color code and you can set custom alerts days, weeks, months, you know, years in advance. And you can also, for those of you who like to have reminders on a daily task or a weekly task, guess what? You can do recurring reminders. Mm -hmm. which is wonderful. So I have it to where I use um, like red for business. I use um, like blue for like social events. Um, My daughter's school schedules like purple, a shade of purple. So there's more different things. And um, for me, uh, what I like to do, you can do this however you want. But for me, I'm the kind of person I like to know 24 24 hours in advance, what's coming down the pipeline. It keeps me less stressed. Some people that might say, oh, that's too much. But I like to know a day in advance what's coming off. So I set and anything that I put in my calendar, I have it remind me 24 hours in advance. Mm-hmm. And I keep my phone on silent because of my husband's illness and my daughter, but um, because she still still take naps, but the notifications still pop up on my phone. So it's not incessantly ding, 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 but I still get those sent to my phone. So I understand and have a reminder. Oh yeah, I do have that medical appointment or that meeting tomorrow. Or, oh, I need to get this task done. Mm-hmm. So that's my favorite um, uh, schedule tool. Then in terms of as a content creator, um, for content creation, I love Notion. Notion has been a lifesaver. There's a free option, but then also there's, you know, you can, you can get more, like with anything, you get more bells and whistles. But Notion, I really love for storing my content because as content creators, we save a lot. We repurpose, you know, we don't, there's the saying, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, just use what you have. And people don't always see your stuff the first time around, so you can just circulate through. So I have boards in there for where I save my e- all my emails, um, podcast episodes. I have a full massive dashboard in there for every episode I plan. Um, all the transcription stuff I get um, from my uh, transcription resource capsule, which I also mm-hmm. use. And I get email, social media and stuff and blog posts and things like that from there. So I use that. And also too, and then and then in terms of planning my um, social media content, I have a prompt board that I have that I actually just started using this month, or I have a couple of them, and I can just plan out my content. So in the mornings when I'm scheduling whatever whatever may work for you for me, it's in the mornings because that's when I do my office hours. In the mornings, I can just look at my uh, content creation board and look at what I have for the day. Do I have a podcast episode? Do I, do I need to transcribe? Do I have a podcast episode I need to upload and get out? Do I do I have um, what are my reels I have scheduled for the day or social media posts? You know, I can just go in there and see what's due, 
And then once I'm done, I can toggle it off and then it disappears. It's, I can still access it, but in terms of what I'm seeing on a daily and weekly basis, it populates out. So all I see is just what's due and it's less clutter for my mind, but it's also saved though too. So if I ever want to go back and use it again, I can. So those are by far my two favorite digital tools, but Whitney, what are your two favorites? Well, one of mine is Google Calendar, 100%. I'm in there like all the time. My stuff is it as hardcore as yours with like all the color coding and stuff, but I do have every single thing written down where, where like whatever time blocks that I have. And then in my phone, like with my notes, I'll have like different things written down for the day, like my priorities. Um, I love working on like even the Google Docs for entrepreneurship things. Like I'll do a lot of, like I have one doc for all my social media content. And then I have another one for each blog post and just like being able to go back and like, look at those types of things um, for organization. I feel like the main thing for me is just like writing things down, like right away. Like when I get told like, okay, you're going to do this thing. Like I write it down in my phone, in my calendar right away, or else I'll totally forget and not know anything. So I feel like just knowing what works for you. That's been something that I've always had to do is like write things down. But like you said, digitally, I don't just like write things on sticky notes and like post it somewhere. And I'm like, Oh yeah, <laughs> like that doesn't yeah. work for me. Um, I've tried like um, planners and stuff like that, like written things and they just don't really work for me. I like the clean digital being able to like back it out, not having to like I see my handwriting. I don't like to love my handwriting. So right. I like everything digital <laughs> and like very clean. Yeah. Um, and then for my business, I actually use ClickUp. So it's kind of that's like another good one. Yeah. That's a really good one um, for planning and things like that. And then I use like other different systems, not necessarily like organizational, but you know, different th content creation tools and whatnot. But I think the main thing is like writing things down and having like a strict calendar with what you know mm -hmm. that you're doing for the day and yes. just having it like somewhere where you can like reference it is right. That's probably like my biggest one. Yeah. And I would say too, like, there's a lot out there. When I started, I did, I started with Asana back in the days and mm -hmm. I liked it, but then I didn't like it. Then I tried Trello. And I, you know, I did, I did all of them, Airtable even. Um, but I really have liked, I really am getting into notion. Um, and, and, um, for task management, I like, um, I also like uh, uh, like Asana, those, I still use Asana some a little bit, but mm -hmm. yeah, those are the ones I like. Airtable is also good too. Um, it can be, it can be great for creating forms for clients. I still use it for all my forms for my business. So like my application that Whitney got, it's in there. Mm -hmm. um, also too, I use some people, um, I know some people that love Airtable for, um, bundles and summits, you know, just have creating a massive dashboard to keep, keep track of all um, digitally any all all the emails graphics swipes um, product links landing pages websites contact info for all their summit um, contributors for bigger projects like that and I actually used to do my podcast over on Airtable but I really have loved Notion because I found a template that's a little cleaner where it's actually by blocks and so it's easier to just open up one card and find things instead of kind of like with the table you have to kind of scroll through to find everything so I would think about that too like when you're choosing your organize, organizational digital tools. Think about that. What makes sense to you? I have some good friends in my mastermind that I'm being trained in. They love, they always have to see things all in everything, everything, whatever they're playing in calendar view. It has to be that way. Or there's other people I know, they like the Trello method where it's kind of cards and boards. Others, it's um, they like seeing it in list view or table view. So mm -hmm. there's, and with these tools, there's lots of other things. That's why I like Notion and Asana so much is because, um, they automatically give you the option of seeing things any any dashboard that you create any table you create etc is you have the option to toggle back and forth do you want to see it in list view do you want to see it in calendar view do you want to see it in board view so it makes it so think about how you like to see things in your brain and how you like to move things over okay mm -hmm. so that's another thing it may sound silly but it's still a part of creating systems that last and make it easier on mm -hmm. you on you in terms of decreasing your stress of being able to find things to go oh there it is that's what I was looking for so let's give our let's give our audience some tips here let's give our mm -hmm. listeners some tips here so if they're just flat out starting from nothing like they've never even heard of a sauna google mm -hmm. calendar click up notion mm -hmm. um even and they've struggled with and they're stuck with planners or they're trying to figure out a system of how to create a hybrid system for maybe doing both planners mm -hmm. and digital tools 
what would be three tips that you would like to give our listeners for getting started with just trying to get some structure back into their life? Because I think that's really the biggest thing is, is just creating structure Mm -hmm. first and foremost. And from there, you can tweak it and really run with it once you get, once you hit, once you get your feet on the ground and start running with it. But until you know what really works, Mm -hmm. let's give them some easy, simple three-step tips, like, like three tips to help them get started. I would say everything that you get assigned or that has a date or like a time that you have to be somewhere, just start writing it into your Google calendar or into your, um, even like if you have an iPhone, like your, um, calendar that comes oh, yeah, with your, yeah, like yeah. Apple, like, I don't even know yeah, what it's called. But... Yeah. Or Android either, you know, most right. phones come with a, use it. They have, you know, you can click on the date and then write in, um, a task or, a date for something it may not have to but if you click it if you go in and click on your phone on the date then it'll pop up and you'll be reminded so yeah I would say yeah everything that has like a date or a time that you need to be somewhere start writing it down digitally in some kind of calendar I would say look at that periodically tip number two is to look at it periodically and figure out how often you need to look at things like I look at things almost every day like and I go through my week schedule but figure out how often you want to look at it. And then number three, figure out how you are going to like start implementing it in your day-to-day like life or in your schedule to make it easier for you. So like, how do you really want to use it? Do you want to use it for work, personal, both, everything? Like what really needs to get like organized and what do you need to be aware of to make that work for you? Mm-hmm. And, and you can have more than one calendar on Google Calendar. I have, um, I got, so like, for example, I have my daughter's school automatically gave everyone a digital Google Calendar for the school schedule. Mm-hmm. So we know, like, when there's events and when there's days off, when they have their breaks, that was thrown into my calendar. And so I popular and then I color coded a certain color so I can just look at it and know like, okay, that's all sc- her school schedule related. And then same thing with the, like my business coach that I work with, same thing. I got a Google calendar from her and I had it pop, I had it populate and it's a certain color. And then, um, then what I did to make it when I was trying to add my own stuff that doesn't automatic populate, um, any business meetings, any, um, medical appointments, I, I chose those colors first personally about what I wanted that to look like. And again, go leverage the, think about how much, how often besides looking at it, how many times do you want to be reminded? You can go in there and put a lot of reminders. So like, for example, like what I do with my business clients or podcast guests is I have it set up in Google calendar once they book their planning call. And also once I send them the link for our podcast recording call, this is how I do it. You can take it or leave it. Um, I have them send out, depending on when we book of how close it is, at least a, a week, a day, and a couple hours before the appointment. So that way they get tagged. And then I also get the alert too to my email and to my phone. So I don't forget, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's also too, to help out the client or the, or the podcast guest. So they know what's going on. And you could do something like that too. You could put multiple reminders for, for one thing. If it's something big and you're just worried about forgetting, have it, set it up in your calendar to remind you um, X amount of days, X amount of um, hours in advance um, or a week. So that way you can kind of just kind of keep that in the back of your brain. Like, okay, this is coming down the pipeline so you can prepare for it. So that could be a good help too. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Whitney, um, what is um, something that um, has personally just resonated with you, either in our conversation today Mm -hmm. or um, in your journey? Because I know getting started is always half the battle, but then Mm -hmm. the journey itself, because things happen every day to us that are out of our controls, our health, our loved one's health, um, we try something as an entrepreneur and it flops and then we feel bad and we have like, okay, we have to start over again. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much that happens to us. Even, even the, once we hit start and we're ready to go on this journey, it's yeah. still a process. So what is something inspirational or hopeful or encouraging that you would like to share with our listeners if they're listening to this and going like, I got some good tips and I got some ideas to start, but I'm still feeling mm-hmm. like, okay, I'm going to start, but then, then what? <laughs> I think that- I'm going to go back to something that we talked about on our discovery call. And I'm going to say one of my favorite quotes is action creates clarity. 
So just being able to do something, some kind of action or thinking about what you want to do or trying to implement a new system or trying to make a plan or even just doing some kind of research, like everything evolves over time and you're going to start to figure things out along the way, but it really is just like putting forth a little bit of action every day and that'll create an even more clear vision for what you want for your future or for what you're trying to accomplish and just do just do a little bit at a time but take nothing's going to change if you don't take action if you don't start something or in a lot of this is like I think a lot of inner work too is trying to dig deep like why are you not starting what's holding you back like are you yeah. having fear like why like why aren't you starting or like what like overwhelming yourself like mentally too like being like why are you so overwhelmed or what is something that is holding you back like from that realm of being so overwhelmed that you can't do anything and like we said before too like having those realistic expectations of being like one thing doesn't have to be like three hours worth of work it could be like 15 minutes of something where you're like you're like, okay, I did one thing that was like really good today. Or say you start, like I built my whole website. I've now done it three times. And it's like, every time I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. I want to get this whole page done. And then I start something and there's some glitch or some error or something. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to set me back another day. But just like, keep, keep coming back to it. Like in just do a little bit at a time and take breaks when you need to, too. Cause when yeah. you're like at your wits end trying to deal with something or figure something out, you're like, I just need a break. And like, you're going to feel a lot better if you just take the break and then come back to it Absolutely. <laughs> instead of trying to like work through it when you're super frustrated. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And you know, guys, whether you're a caregiver, whether you're a business owner, whether you're a mom, I guarantee you where you're at today you're going to be in such a different season in a year from now. Yeah. And as entrepreneurs, especially, and as caregivers, and as even as moms, new information is coming at us all the time. And so I don't want you, so we can be so caught and stuck in the feeling of like, oh, I have to learn everything and know everything before I can take action. Analysis paralysis, that doesn't help you or serve you. So you need to be open to just taking in the information, filtering it in your brain, taking what parts resonate with you and then implementing it right away. Action creates clarity. That's what my Mm -hmm. business coach says actually all the time too. I love that. I love that quote too. Um, So it's very important guys that you just give yourself grace and realize Mm -hmm. that you're probably going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes and it's going to probably take some trial and error that. And I, and I want to say too, with your systems is my rule of thumb is give it 90 days, give it a quarter. Or, even, or at least give it a month because you don't know just after a week if something works or doesn't work. Mm-hmm. Okay, you got to give it some time because you're establishing new habits mm-hmm. and you're 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 getting you're training your brain to do something new. And so it is naturally designed to keep us safe and freak out and and tell us all these untrue and unhelpful thoughts when we force ourselves our brain to work and do something new. So give yourself ninety days or at least the minimum a month with a new, with a new idea before you totally ditch it and go, Oh, this didn't work. You know, I'm a failure because hopping from one thing to another, to another, to another, without really giving it some time to see if you can make this work, you know, is a waste of time and energy too. And then it, and then, and that hinders you with your progress as a whole anyway. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. give yourself 90 days, give yourself at least a month, a month to 90 days and see if it works before you decide to look at something else. If you really find out that you hate it or that it didn't work for it, it didn't work or serve you, move on. If it if it works and you're finding out and you're actually getting some ideas of how to even make it better, run with it. Okay, that's where the magic happens when you figure out a system. Um, I know for me, it's been so life changing, just breaking down our household stuff. Like Fridays are the days I de- deep clean our bathrooms. I do laundry every day. I kind of eyeball the floors and mop and sweep as needed um, because it is we're, we are so busy and there's so much going on and that's okay and same thing with the battery I'm not p- pressuring myself like oh I have to do x y and z every day you know mm-hmm. sometimes it's like okay today I'm gonna I'm feeling ambitious could I see something in the pantry that's out of date okay I'm, I I the other day I found something that was out of date and so I just went through and went through our whole pantry and decluttered it and it felt very mm-hmm. satisfying to have that done so pockets of time just take it a little bit one project one day one moment at a time Mm -hmm. and you know it's always going to be there so 
just give yourself some grace and time. So anyway, Whitney, I have really enjoyed having you on the podcast. Your tips are so helpful. I'm sure someone else is going to be like, finally, someone gets me. So how, (laughs) so moving forward, where can we find more Whitney Gardner? Yes. So um, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok um, at the bold mama co. And um, yeah, those are the best places to connect with me, especially Instagram. You can send me a message. I would love to connect with your listeners if they want to learn more um, about anything that they have questions on. And yeah, I love connecting with people. Awesome. And do you have any new offers or freebies or, or resources that you would like besides your social media that you would like to share? Yeah. So I do have a freebie. Um, I can send you the link. If you subscribe to my email, you'll get a free um, download right now that's attached to it. And it's all about being able to set boundaries to feel less overwhelmed and um, less exhausted. So it's a really good one. If you want to just do some simple, actionable boundary setting techniques. I like that. I mean, that's (laughs) a whole nother episode in itself. Um, Not learning to say no as a wife, mom, caregiver, business owner, yes. we're so bad, especially as women. I don't know what it is with us women. We have had just a bad habit of not being able to say no. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Right. It's, it's a struggle. It is a struggle. Holy moly. All right, Whitney. Well, thank you so much for being a guest today on the Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined podcast. Guys, go stalk uh, um, Whitney on her Instagram, her TikTok. Also, be sure to check out her website to get that amazing freebie. And just check out her website for more information about how to work with Whitney because she has some amazing content coming. Um, Also, um, be sure to uh, sign up for my new event called Power Hour, Resetting Your Mind, Body, and Soul for an Impactful 2024 for on January 24th. The landing page is up, so go ahead and sign up. It's going to be an amazing event via Zoom where we're going to do some deep journaling, some reflection about 2023, and what we and setting some intentions and some goals for our journey as a caregiver, as a business owner, as a human being, um, as we transition into 2024. So it's coming so I hope you can come to that. So sign up. I, the link will be below um, um, on in whatever, wherever you're watching this, whether it's my website, um, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, it'll be below. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you next time on another episode of the Caregiving and Entrepreneurship Reimagined podcast. Take care, guys, and we'll see you soon.